session today is uh, as a follow-up from last week. We got uh, really into what we were doing with the rubrics last week and using them as a way of uh, self-assessment for our students and for them to be able to show how they are progressing on their own. So this is a follow-up to that one, single point rubrics, mapping the course for students in the driver's seat. And so as you can tell, we are um, following in the path that Mary started out for us. She uh, invited us to uh, figure out ways to make sure that we have uh, our gas tanks full for this journey we're taking. And, uh, it's, and, and as I was reading through and, and working on some of the things for this one for today, um, I realized that the other uh, metaphor would be that uh, the, the GPS format. So we'll take, take a closer look at that. And so what I'm gonna do right now is take us to the Slido and take a look at the comments. So, yep. so uh, ways to incorporate self-assessment. It looks like ref reflections has been a, uh, a hot item in our uh, in our conversation, being reflective, uh, video, uh, embedded questions, rubrics, reflective journals. I like that. I like that. And we have uh, a tool for creating one of those for, for those of you who are uh, interested in doing that. Uh, versus review something. So I neglected to say to put dashes between words that you want to stay together on there, but we can uh, we can see that there's a lot of possibilities here for uh, for self assessment, being able to give some thought to how we are uh, thinking about how we progress through this through this. So that's uh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, that's going to stay active for just a few minutes until I have a, uh, a short break that I can change it over to let you uh, take a look at the next one. So let me take us back. All right. And so now it is also my pleasure to introduce the beautiful young lady sitting next to me. This is Dr. Nancy Shahada, who has the honor of having just completed, had her course completed to be recertified in the QM process. And I think it's our first one. Oh, wait a second. I, I think so. Mary will, Mary can confirm that for us. But, uh, but it was quite a process. So what I'm going to do is say, Dr. Shahada, what ways do you have for uh, students to keep themselves on track? Self-assessment. Um, I I have peer assessment, um, mm, like assignments throughout the course. They do a video presentation other than me assessing them. They yeah. also have two fellow classmates that usually assess them as well. Um, I have reflection assignments regarding, um, they view a virtual scenario. They kind of give me a gist of how they would deal with it. And then um, they share those thoughts with the class and yeah. we try to get responses. I try to use Flipgrid with that. So oh, it's yeah. video based yeah. rather than written discussion board posts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those are the two things that really come to mind. Okay, excellent. And I'm going to share an example from another faculty member that I have had the pleasure of working with who um, has carried over into his online courses a strategy that he uses in his face to face. And that is, having the students close to the end of the semester just fill out a document giving themselves points for doing the things that he has suggested that they do things that were not necessarily graded through the through the session like one was a um a keeping a journal of of um items from a particular reading that he had them doing and doing some of the other things. And he allows them to give themselves points for the things that they accomplished through the semester. And he actually does put that in. Uh, this is a graduate level course. And so he uh, emphasizes to the students that it the importance of them being uh, ethical in their field, which 
works for all of us. And uh, I, I have, I, I have applauded him several times for for doing that. So it's a, it's a uh, learning experience for me because I would not have thought of that. <laughs> That's a great idea. It is, yeah. And so here's just a uh, a quick overview of some of the things that we're going to get to today. She says, or she's watching the clock. Uh, we're going to take a look at recent shifts based on research in the student focus. And we're going to think about our role as instructors and then move that directly into the use of the single point rubric. Uh, and we have a, a, a pretty interesting one to share with you. And we are also going to think about how we can incorporate some of this into, into our own courses. And so before moving into that, I want to take a look at some of the things that we have talked about in uh, a couple of previous sessions. Um, uh, in a couple of different sessions, I believe it was Lisa that talked to us about the differences in holistic rubrics and analytical rubrics. We're going to take a look at that other one in just a moment. And uh, looked at within the analytical rubrics the uh, critical elements and the proficiency levels and how those two two things coincide connect uh, for, in the rubric and then uh, we will take a look at what we're referring to today as single point rubrics but also referred to as uh, task specific rubrics and so lisa you want to take it for a moment Absolutely. Uh, so one of the things that, uh, well, you know, Dr. Shad and I were talking about just a few moments ago was how overwhelming it was to me. And she agreed that it was the same way for her when we first started using rubrics to help evaluate student work. And um, the biggest turnaround for me was when I decided to take a general leap of faith and, and literally Put the rubrics in the hands of the students. I did that because they have, I mean, it, essentially the rubrics are for them, right? And uh, I thought they have more input and more perspective than I do being one person with my own experiences. That's when they started giving me feedback about the clarity, the type of rubric, how they see using rubrics to help them which brought me to learning a little bit more and more interest in learning about the difference between a holistic approach and the analytical approach. And, and what we see here on this page really speaks a little bit more to the analytical approach where you're looking for specific critical elements because there are so many details that you really want to make sure that you are searching for when you are looking to support student work, whether it's at the feedback or milestone level or whether you're now evaluating at the end of something, right? But there are specifics you don't wanna miss, right? Those are the critical elements of those criterion. And those are what I would refer to as turn left, turn right, go straight ahead. And if I'm using it for instruction purposes, okay, so formatively, and I do have a sample of a rubric that you can use in terms of milestones or, or formative, and then use the same one for a summative. But if I'm using them formatively and I'm getting this, this, I'm getting the work from the students midway through the class, I'm seeing where they're at and I'm using this analytical rubric all broken down by categories, I can, it informs me about where they're at. Meaning, going back to that GPS, like there's traffic up ahead, right? I love Waze, the app on my phone, or Google Maps does this as well, but I love Waze because I'm driving to and from Boston. I know that there's there's something happening around 495 West and I have to take an alternative route. To me, that's the same way I would use a rubric scoring student work formatively where I'm saying, okay, clearly they're not getting this. So I'm gonna make adjustments in my approach. Maybe it's a new resource. And maybe it's a simple announcement, whatever the case may be, I'm adjusting what I do with students. Those proficiency levels, that's the target. That's really where we want to see our students hitting ideally. And I always use that proficient or that spot on as the center. And Judy's going to get into that in a few moments on single point rubrics. 
But those proficiency levels tell you as the instructor and the students that based on where they're at in their learning, right, whether it's undergraduate, or graduate, whether they're in the beginning of a program or more toward the end, right, the, it tells them what exactly the work should look like. So for example, I often, I often tell people, you can, I used to teach and I used to be a principal of an elementary school. Now my kindergarten students can describe, right? And my first graders and fifth and then third graders and fourth, they can start to now describe photosynthesis, okay? They can explain photosynthesis. Now, when a nine-year-old explains the process of photosynthesis, that is considerably different. It looks different than when somebody who is in the profession, <laughs> right? Who's a scientist, right? Working on research, their explanation is going to be significantly different than that of a third grader. So it's keeping in mind not only those critical elements that you're looking for. So here, if we're, if we're going to be baking chocolate chip cookies and that's your assessment, you're going to bring them into the Center for E-Learning for evaluation. And we have identified what we consider to be chocolate chip cookies of high quality. And we were focusing on those critical elements being the chocolate chips, the shape and size of the cookie and the texture of the cookie. And we've literally said that if you're proficient spot on, right? We want the shape and size of the cookie to be equal circles, three inch diameter. And we want them to be baked the texture so that the middle is soft and the edges are crunchy, right? So those are very specific. And if you hit those spot on, then you're proficient. And if you go above and beyond that, we don't want it to be a guessing game. We want to actually show you what we consider to be a cookie that's above and beyond proficient. And that would be that, for example, not only are the cookies the right size and they're baked so that the, the soft, the middle is soft and the edges are crispy, but that they're still warm. And maybe you put a dash of sea salt in there or caramel or something, you know, right? That to us is beyond proficient because they're warm and chewy and yummy and all that. So we would use this analytical rubric. We would use this and give it to you as the student because you're going to be evaluated using this rubric. So why not? And and I and I now that we're all ready to volunteer to be the taste testers yes, for it. <laughs> we are. I'm up for it. Yeah, thinking about those nice warm chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> what a way to get our afternoon started, right? Um, so this is the example of of the uh, analytical rubric with the, the levels, the proficiency levels. We also last week talked about um, the gas gauge as being, we use the metaphor of the gas gauge if we're if we're at half a tank how far can we go if we're at a full tank how far can we go and this was the uh the indicator that mary had mary did you want to chat for a moment hi everybody can you hear hi, me mary. hi <laughs> i'm so happy hi. to see you nancy and it's great <laughs> Yeah, so I, I said last week that to me a um, full tank means all the possibilities where, oh, how far I can go. I can go anywhere. And to me, this is what a full tank re reads. My students can go anywhere beyond the mark. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. So what we're going to do now is is take a look at the difference. We've just been talking about general rubrics, multiple assignments, multiple proficiency levels, and um, and multiple uses. And and we probably at a, at one point we'll have a, a further conversation with you, Lisa, about using them both for uh, formative and summative assessments. And, uh, and the, so the differences between the two, the task specific rubrics or the single, single point um, rubric, is where we take a look simply at one component of it and provide um, where the, at giving the student the opportunity to provide their reflections. And then as the instructor, the opportunity to provide feedback for those. And so we're going to give you uh, an example that I think everyone will probably be able to get. And so let's take a look at a moment for a moment at, from the student perspective, why this would work for them. 
and part of it has to do with the fact that they have a long and winding road ahead of them and they want to make sure that they have are, are headed in the right direction so that they know that they're they're, they're going to use that full tank of gas that Mary provided us last week to actually move ourselves in the direction that we need to go. So when one of the articles that the, that I read indicates that this single point rubric answers a multi multitude of questions. Where am I right now? Because I'm thinking about what I have done. Where do I want to go? We, we give it gives us a chance to think about the, the final goal, the ultimate goal. And how do I how do I get there? Which which turns am I going to take along the way? And so this is an indication of our uh, that that they're we're, they're focusing. It's truly metacognitive in 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 the way it works because they are literally thinking about what they're doing, where they're going, and what they need to do to get where they want to go. And in today's world. Uh, we would say we need a good GPS. As I was going through this and putting some of this stuff together, I, I was a little bit nostalgic for the maps and folding them up and, and being able to look at all the cool stuff that we found on those maps. So, uh, but today's today's kids are looking for a, uh, a, a good solid GPS. And so the GPS for the students gives them the navigation that they need. It shows them the direction they want to go from the standpoint of, uh, as, as, an, as the instructor, this keeps them on a positive scale. Instead of having to take a look at uh, all the possible ways that they could be less than proficient in their in their final objective, we stay. We just keep it focused on on one part of it. Uh, but the, this also helps them avoid uh, the speed traps that are that are coming down the road. Helps them avoid taking uh, those turns off in the wrong direction. Although I kind of enjoy those if I really have time. But it gives gives them the freedom to literally shift their course. And make some make some choices about which direction that they that they want to go. And uh, I will uh, coincide with what Lisa says. If you have a question, please feel free to post it in the chat. And I'm going to invite you, Nancy, to speak up. And Abigail's in the room with us. So and and anyone else, uh, let Dimitri, who is our host today, know that if you want to open your mic and talk, that's absolutely fine. Too. So uh, the GPS provides that navigation for students. In case you haven't figured it out, I am headed in the direction of you as the instructor being the GPS for these students. You are setting them on the right course. You are providing the positive feedback for them as they move along and encouraging them to reflect to think about where they are, where they're going, and, and what they need to do to get there. So I have uh, reopened the Slido, and the question on this one now is, what are some ways that you guide students through the learning process? I should have let you know a while back that I had it reopened, but we'll, uh, I will probably move forward a little bit and then we'll come back into it. So I'm going to encourage you to go back to slido.com, uh, cel-pd-930, and put your comments in there for different ways that you guide students through their learning process. So we'll, I'm, I'm going to uh, move on and come back to that one and give you a chance to, to uh, post your comments in there. So what we're talking about is uh, is what um, many of the articles we have talked about refer to as a single point rubric. And the benefits to it is that it puts the students in the driver's seat, literally for where they want to go. And we've had, there has been a great deal of research 
uh, recently about the fact that higher higher ed uh, education is moving in the direction <clears throat> of the student being responsible for their own learning. And I had I have felt um, based on you know ever since I first became involved with online learning that that was a um, a feature of the of online learning. <clears throat> but according to what we've been reading about, it's it's in all of higher ed that it is, uh, there is much more of a focus of the instructor being a facilitator, a guide, a guide on the side of the, as the old, one of the old adages that directs students in their learning. And truth be known, it has always been thus, right? It's our, we've, we've been, the, we've been, we provide the opportunity for them. We can't do anything else and do any more than that. And so the Mary, same, uh, yes. Mary commented, redirect them to the rubric itself. Ah, yes. The access to the rubric uh, right from the very beginning to all the rubrics. And I have started putting, uh, itemizing the rubrics in one of the, at the beginning of the session that they're going to be using. And of course, before any assignment, they see the rubric that they're, that, that it is going to be used. But I have also moved myself in the direction of the single point rubric <laughs> based on some of the, the comments that we have talked about and uh, actually tried it out with, uh, with my students last week. I have an assignment that is due this week for them. And I had them just fill out a reflection form based on the different components that I've asked them to include in it and where they feel like they are at this point. And uh, they actually acknowledged that it gave them the opportunity to think about the assignment and to think about where they were and what they needed to do, which is exactly where, exactly what we, uh, what we were, we're shooting for and I'm going to have them fill that same thing out when they finish the assignment. So the opportunity to reflect, to think about where they are in this process, and then revise, make some changes, change their course, shift direction, uh, take off on that side road and go see where it takes us. Adam, uh, Adam had a question. Yes. What's the advantage or disadvantage for providing all the rubrics up front rather than providing them as a learning process, as the learning process develops? Okay, so that they know uh, the expectations. They know what what's what's going to be, uh, wh where they're headed, what they need to accomplish. Uh, you have a large assignment that is due at the end of your course. And how do they how do they get to that large assignment? Um, well, first of all, I provide them with the rubrics at least the last two semesters. I was telling Lisa that I recently started utilizing it in in Canvas, so they have access to the rubric. But of course, I have never used a single point rubric, well, but it's an okay. analytical one, and they get a clear idea of what I'm expecting. And it's uh, actually a research paper, but they go through the process of. The outline, you know, we review yeah. it together. We do like a reflective assignment yeah. with that, and then they go on to actually writing the paper. Yeah. Um, but the idea is for them to know what I'm expecting, mm -hmm. um, know what needs to be included in order for it to be, you know, a proficient mm -hmm. paper, or exemplary paper, just so they have an idea. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and with the guidance along the way, and uh, <clears throat> as <clears throat> Lisa commented, it takes away the surprises. And allows them for the the planning. Um, I have uh, actually uh, a faculty member I've been working with. So he has three daughters, and when they got an assignment, one of them would sit down that night and try to get the whole thing done. One would uh, these are triplets, by the way, and one would work on uh, would think, oh yeah, that's a, that's an assignment, and within the last three days, sit herself down to do it, and then the other one did the moving along through the way each one of them chose their own path and uh and and being being a good daddy he tried to recommend that they all follow the one that you know made steps along the way but we each take our own path in getting getting to it um so a, a key to self adult self-directed learning 
Yep, definitely, definitely makes sense. We think we have something in mind, and unless you let us know that it isn't as clear, then that's uh, we, we need your we need your guidance in there. I actually have a question. Uh huh. Um, now, with the single point rubric, um, other than using it as a reflective um, kind of assessment or assignment. Have you or Lisa used it where you're actually grading the students, um, you know, assignment utilizing this type of rubric rather than having the analytical where, you know, your points are there and you kind of yeah. check off you're here, you're, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, yes. and, it, and it definitely, I definitely am going to on the one that I just assigned with my students. Right now, it's just a reflection for them. And when they submit at the end, it will be a reflection. But there is also, and you'll see in one that we'll be sharing in just a moment, the opportunity to uh, to give them feedback as they're going through. So they've made a comment, and then as the instructor, you can give feedback. But the advantage is you don't have to determine all of the, the levels of proficiency. You provide them with the one uh, uh, with one, and if they choose to go beyond that, they can do that. Or if they choose to be not quite that, that's their choice as okay. well. Yeah. Yes. May May I just add one one yes, thing? Yes, please. Thank you. So one of the things that I, I just want to say before we end today, we're at fifteen minute mark, by the way, um, but we're okay, in, we're in good shape with timing. Good shape with oh, timing. Um, thank you. One of the things that I, I want everyone to understand or, or to at least to, to at least digest is that um, there are many different ways to create a rubric for students and for yourself when you're evaluating the work. Many, many, many different. And it really depends upon what it is that you are um, that what you're concentrating on. So a you know, if you're if for example, if you're if the students are creating a, a marketing brief let's say, or they're going through a SWOT analysis, let's say. Though there are very specific criteria that, that you as the instructor and the students would have to be aware of with that whole package of the plan and a SWOT analysis and so on, the target market and so on. And you could break up that larger um, assignment. Let's say we could just have the students focus on the target market for their product. OK, now that could be a one task, right? One specific task. It can be formative, meaning that um, you're giving them feedback on how they are um, describing the target market. Right. And you could also give them a score because they've gone through X number of assignments, whatever, whatever. And now, you know, this is time for, you know, for them to get an actual score in addition to the evaluation yeah. using yeah. that rubric. That would be a formative with a score, yeah. it's a, and it's a single task. And if you remember, Judy had the slide, you've got a task, you've got the single task rubric, and then you've got the general rubric, which can be holistic or it can be more analytical. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's not a one size fits all. The key is that the students understand and that the language that you're using is consistent throughout. So for example, if you're going to stick with um, exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, whatever, those need to be consistent throughout the course because it can, can become a bit confusing. And the, la the last thing I just want to quickly point out is, oh, you're going, yeah, go okay. ahead. I'm just going to jump into the Slido while you're you go right ahead, please. Yeah. And and so um, the last thing is that when you are working on a uh, task specific rubric. Um, you know, this really does help you as the instructor to plan next steps, right? Uh, the proficiency level of what it looks like is what you really need to think of time and place where the students are at when you're giving them, you know, this assessment. Um, and then in the hopes that, you know, two or three weeks down the road, they're in a different place. They It's more comprehensive, let's say. They have more, uh, more additives into that um, final assessment. Um, the one thing that we want to always make sure is that we're considering the evaluation itself. So Judy's going to jump in a little bit more on the single point rubric, mm -hmm. right? And I want to, so, right. So I've yeah. had conversations with people that's that were that sort of talk about, well, why do we need to show them anything other than proficient? Or why do we need to show them anything other than exemplary? 
you know, there are some faculty members, and rightly so, right? Why do I need to show them what needs improvement is? Why can't we just say this is what exemplary is or this is what proficient is mm -hmm. and have them work toward that target? Yeah. That's the target. That's what we want to give. That them. is. That is. So I mean, I, but you know, it's 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 all up in the air because it depends on how you use it. Yeah. That's yeah. What I to say. Yeah. So yeah. going back to uh, to the ways that we guide students through the learning process, uh, homework problems with solutions, and uh, that that takes us back to the uh, to the session you had with uh, Dr. Sorge too. Is he? provided the solutions and then ver the various ways of getting to the solutions. Uh, peer evaluation, self-assessment and planning, adjunct instruction, yes, absolutely. Um, adjuncts are, are it may need additional guidance to get through that. So the discussion throughout the course, and I love this one, this uh, for research methods, using the Socratic method to, develop, to both develop and defend the researchers reasoning for a particular question or methodology. So what a great, a great way of using that, that uh, modeling for our uh, modeling for our students and just in time instruction and conferences. Excellent comments. Thank you so much. And I will be sharing these uh, all these outs with all of you. This one will be staying open as well for the end until we get to uh, get to the the end of it. So I'm going to take us back to um, just some of the some of the, the recent research is uh, it gives us a, a different perspective on rethinking how we actually do formative assessment, how we can take them through that progression through here's here's where I am, here's some suggestions for moving uh, on and then until we get to that actual, uh, assessment or to the resubmission of it. Uh, it also encourages active engagement because the student students our students are now in charge of their own learning. They take they take the the lead in what they decide how they're going to how deeply involved they're going to be in their own learning, and it moves us away from the instructor. I, I use the 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 adage the um, the guide on the side the other part of that is the sage on the stage we're moving away from that sage on the stage into being a guide on the side here's here's some of the information and here's how we can uh, adapt to it and so uh, I'm going to uh, indicate that this could well be a treasure map a single criterion so we reference the uh, Breakfast in bed uh, analogy last week is something that we can all uh, really understand and grasp. So now I am going to. Uh, Lisa made a comment that is a, also let's keep in mind that rubrics should help us as instructors with timing. Rubrics do not help us to evaluate student work with more accuracy and cuts down the time it takes to evaluate student yes. work. Yes, definitely, definitely. Now then, I am. And Dr. Judy, you are right on time. Bless me. Wow. Adam has another question directed toward Lisa and others. Hmm. He says, "How do you balance use of rubrics as feedback and written comments on the student's product or artifact?" Yeah. Okay, and we're getting ready to share uh, one one strategy with you for that. As you can see. On this particular format, there's a place for the student reflection and then a place for the instructor feedback on it. So this is the one that we shared last week with the critical elements. And uh, so uh, here we are with the, uh, uh, the student reflection on those critical elements. Go for it, Lisa. Well, you know, again, we're we're looking at a single point, meaning that on the left hand side, the critical element is at the proficient description level, which means that we're only explaining to uh, Chris, um, you know, what it looks like when he successfully um, serves Mary breakfast in bed, and 
it, we were very specific with the verb, with the description of what he needed to do. And we also gave him some wiggle room to go above and beyond, uh, you know, and, and put a little bit of his authenticity uh, into the approach. And then he had to reflect, this is after the effect, after the fact, he, he reflected not only on what happened, but how he could improve. And one of the things that he realizes, I'm not sure how much you can see, um, but um, he needs to make sure that that third critical element down, that when he wakes Mary gently, he needs to make sure that he doesn't open the shades first so that the sun blinds her when she opens her eyes. <laughs> Because when it does, she's not able to see anything. And then it re she realizes, or he realizes that, you know, if he had waited to open the blinds, then she would have seen that he had left the door open. And then she would have known the dog jumped in and then jumped on the bed yep. and consequently spilled everything, the orange juice, all over the newspaper and so on and so on. So the idea behind a single point rubric like this is that you only give them proficient and that the student has an opportunity to reflect when they submit that piece. And then you are only as the instructor looking at those pieces, those critical elements. And we're not, we're not looking at the, the, you know, the, the grammar or the mechanics. Uh, that can be something else, but it's not something that you would score because that in itself is not on the rubric for scoring. So can we scroll Are you ready back? for the instructor feedback? Yep. Yep. And then so the instructor feedback, um, and Adam, I'm actually going to address your question in a moment because it goes along exactly with what, what this is all about here. So you see the instructor has now responded not only to the evidence that's found or that was experienced in, in, um, in, in the task of serving Mary breakfast in bed, which is sort of experiential, you know, because, you know, there were a lot of, you know, specific things that he needed to consider and think about. And he was like on the job in the, at the moment he was doing this. But. So she gave him uh, you know, feedback on exactly what he did do and then gave him some feedback about how he can um, make it better. So you, you folks, you're gonna get a copy of this um, you know, just so you can see how it's used. But Adam, one of the things that, that you know, in terms of, gee, when do we put the, the feedback in the rubric and when do we, we put it right on the document itself? And especially in Canvas, we have the ability to write right on the PDF, right, right on that document. Um, one of the things that I like to do is give a more global feedback, give more global feedback on each critical element in the rubric itself. And then sometimes I will address the student on the paper. I'll say, you know, take a look at the rubric for more specific details because you don't want to clutter the paper. You know, you don't want to make it, you know, like the red tide hit, you know, <laughs> it can be very overwhelming <laughs> to the student when they, you know, see all that feedback. So, um, you know, like I'll, I'll say, I'll just put a little piece on there and, you know, give them a little bit of insight. And then I'll see, you know, see this critical element for, for more details. Um, that's how I choose to do it. I don't think there's a one size fits all with this, but I think the most important thing is that you, um, you get, the, get the rubric in the student's hand before and you refer to that rubric all the time. You're, you're telling them, remember this part, this is what we're doing right now. And take a look at the rubric because it's, it's in the rubric. So that they see it and they can prepare and plan and it it helps them to make connections so that's that's my take on that adam i hope i i hope i answered your question and and so the the uh the surprise element wound up being the dog came in spilled the orange juice and she didn't get to enjoy her breakfast but burnt her lip and the newspaper was soaked yeah. in orange juice. yeah we're gonna make sure you folks we're gonna make sure you get all that thank you mary for for letting me have fun <laughs> absolutely absolutely and so well uh, we will be we will be uh, sharing that that item with you so uh this brings me to my question for you not on not in slido but simply um what to to think now about what you could add in to encourage that the self uh, assessment and the opportunity for students to reflect along with your own feedback. So we're gonna uh, open up the comments as well as uh, anybody that would like to chat for a minute or two. Oh 
And Nancy, Nancy's sitting here, the wheels are turning, yeah. I can see. I love the idea of having the students reflective. Yes. Because the way I yeah. thought it was, is I thought it was a single point, and then I would, you know, say, okay, they went above they and beyond on didn't. the right side, yeah. and then the left yeah. would be, these were the areas that needed improvement. Um, but I love the idea of actually giving them a chance to see how mm -hmm. they did. Yeah. And so, then going on and grading it from there. Mm -hmm. To think about where they are and how they, what they, where they want to go and how they want to get there. And that, that truly is one of the key pieces. So it saves you from having to think about all the things that could go wrong with the, the orange juice and the dog and the lines and the whole bit, but to think about what can, you know, what we can do to improve the whole piece of it. Anybody else? Well, I'll just quickly say that, you know, when, when Corey Sorge was, uh, uh, when he came to us and we had a coffee chat back in July, one of the things that he shared with us was his approach uh, working with students in, you know, in terms of mathematics and, or physics problems, right? And yeah. what, he, what he wanted to see was how they went about with the solution. So the self-assessment before they submit it to, to you, the instructor, is, um, it allows you to get a little more insight into their thinking when they were when they were completing the product. Um, oftentimes, when we're just seeing the evidence and the student work, you know, you know, we're saying, "Gee, where did they get that?" Or yes. uh, we're thinking, "You know what? They do understand this. You know, they do get it. They're uh -huh. just not saying it the right way." Well, when we give them a chance to have, um, you know, time to reflect themselves, and we can read that gives us something else to build off of as well. So we can say, you know, you're spot on, you're right about, it. I agree, thank you for clarifying. And then there's the next piece and then you give them that next piece. Yeah, absolutely. That conversation and, with them really is, you know. Yeah, and Eleanor, thank you for your comment. Yeah, it will probably be much later today or first thing in the morning when I send things out to you. But, but as always, we love to share with everybody. So, and I am going to uh, to let you know, speaking of sharing, that coming up next week, we our topic is uh, differentiating for success, being able to, within the online environment, provide, again, provide the students with what they need to take them from where they are to where they need to go. And then um, in the following week, uh, we have our library friends coming in to share some things on media literacy with us, and I was I took a look at some of the materials that uh, that she has gathered. Um, I saw some of that this morning, and, and there's a lot of really really good material coming in as far as being able to how we evaluate the media that we use, which is a really important piece of it. So, uh, if anyone else has any questions or comments, uh, please share them. Otherwise. We thank you for spending this time with us today and uh, interacting. Thanks to all of you for your for your comments, for your perspective, and and uh, and for being willing to join in with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.